Qingming, or Tomb Sweeping Day, is a festival observed by ethnic Chinese every April. During this festival, families visit the tombs of their ancestors to pray and make ritual offerings. But this year, it looks set to be disrupted once again by COVID-19. So what happens when reality confronts the dearly departed? A scene of tranquility. Not quite what you would expect this time of the year at China's cemeteries. At this site alone, some 80,000 people normally visit a day during the annual Qingming festival. Today, there is not a soul in sight. As China battles its largest COVID-19 outbreak in two years, while cities like Shanghai entered a sudden lockdown. Though she's hired as a customer service officer for the funeral parlor, Due to the pandemic, she's had to help out in other ways. Uh Under normal circumstances, family members usually sweep the tombs themselves as a show of respect. So while the funeral parlor that Ms. Liu works for has offered professional tomb sweeping services for years, it didn't take off until the pandemic started. As COVID cases surge in China, Ms. Zhao estimates some 40% of her customers will opt for such services this year. Ms. Liu herself says she may have to bow up to 600 times a day on behalf of her customers as she offers gifts of flowers, wine and food to the dead. Well, people in mainland China have had to find new ways to honor their loved ones. Down south in Hong Kong, Tradition is also taking a back seat, with the city still gripped by a relentless, though easing, COVID-19 outbreak. Over a million infections and more than 7,000 deaths. The figures say it all. Hong Kong's fifth COVID-19 outbreak is its worst by far, and those left behind have to pick up the pieces. Uh, my father got COVID on February uh, 22 and sent to the emergency room on February 25. Unluckily, uh, my father passed away at Yanzai Hospital at lights on February 25. Vincent, were you able to collect the body right after? Lucky then, I called my funeral director to arrange the uh, cremation and the farewell ceremony. He told me the earliest day of the cremation is March 27, 
That's why I could only connect my father's body after one month. At the peak of the crisis, Hong Kong saw over 200 deaths a day. Space was tight in mortuaries, so the dead were carted off to mobile fridges. But a recent lockdown in Shenzhen disrupted the supply of coffins to Hong Kong, compounding the weight at crematoriums, even as authorities extended operating hours to ease the bottleneck. Will you be able to prepare a funeral for your father, given that there are so many complications that you need to okay, deal okay. with? The body was classified as uh, second category. There's a danger of infection. My funeral director told me funeral rooms will now uh, decline the makeup using surfaces due to the infection fears. I'm so sad. Uh, I'm so sorry for my father. Uh, this is the last I can do for him, you know but I can't do this right now. Not just that. Vincent won't be able to lay his father to rest in time for the annual Qingming Festival. Instead, the ashes will be kept temporarily in a funeral store. The crowds have thinned at public cemeteries in Columbaria during the Qingming Festival since the pandemic started, and roads leading to grave sites like this have also seen fewer traffic because people are encouraged to stay home and pay their respects online. Still, it's hardly a ghost town because tradition is rooted deeply in Hong Kong's ethnic Chinese society. Then 女性的衣服, Whether it's the usual wares or something a little more elaborate. Whatever you're looking for, chances are Mr. To has it. He runs Chun Sing Hong, a 50 year old shop selling funeral offerings in Shangwan. The district buzzes with trendy cafes. But it's also known for coffin homes and funeral trade services. Their longevity speaks volumes. For all its modernity, tradition remains a vital part of the Hong Kong DNA. He's not just a businessman, he's a purveyor of old Chinese customs. Customs that now seem like a privilege few can afford in the face of mounting COVID-19 deaths. Even so, they still find a way. Uh, I shall resist and offer the uh, sacri sacrifice to my father in that store. And of course, my mother in Zhenzhou uh, Columbarium in case of lockdown or not near Qingming. I'm afraid I have to worship remote at home. Of course, I, I'm so upset. I hope I can move my father to live with my mother together as soon as possible. For those who have lost their loved ones to the fifth COVID-19 wave, this year's Qingming holds a deeper purpose. More than an annual tradition, it's a chance to accord dignity to the dead and for the living to finally move on. Preparations are underway for the second funeral in two weeks in central Java's Timbul's local village. 
and as caretaker of Wonorajo Cemetery for the last three years, it's Rahman Jeffrey's job to ensure that the burial's preparations proceed smoothly. Timbul Sloko isn't like Indonesia's other villages. Located on the northern coast of Java Island in Demak Regency, the village was once situated about 2.5 kilometers from the Java Sea. Today, it is surrounded by seawater, which floods its cemeteries. Di sekitar kami ini semua penuh air, Pak. Bisa dijelaskan sedikit ini kenapa, Pak? Penguburan yang tenggelam tenggelam ini, itu kan kita semua kan punya warga. Ya kalau yang tenggelam itu kan kita tahu sendirilah warga warga di sekitar sini kan kebanyakan pada kekurangan. Apalagi untuk beli padas untuk batur, berarti makan makan seharian pun kalau cukup dah dah senang. Makanya kalau yang tenggelam ini kan belum bisa beli padas. Kalau untuk yang tinggi tinggi ini semua ini, itu kan dia bisa beli padas untuk mengguruk. Out of three cemeteries in the village, the cemetery at Wonorojo Hamlet is the least devastated. Even so, preparing for a burial here is still a laborious task. The men hammer away and put together a coffin made of wood. Once it's ready, they measure out a tarpaulin sheet to encase the coffin in. It's back-breaking work, made more tedious by the blistering sun. The lower half of the cemetery is flooded and water needs to be kept from seeping into the grave. I'm told that today is a good day. It's low tide, which means water inside the graves can be removed manually. During high tide, this entire area is underwater, up to this height, which means if there are any burials to be held, water needs to be pumped out electrically. The funeral procession arrives. The grave is ready. Coffin laid. And the body placed inside. Once sealed, the group of men form a chain, passing down mud to cover the grave. Among them is 46-year-old Majudi, and the grave belongs to his stepfather, who died the previous night. But while conditions at the cemetery at Wonorejo Hamlet are bad enough, having a burial in the village's two other cemeteries seems a more impossible task, with water at much higher levels. Even making one's way to this cemetery in Bogorame Hamlet is precarious. Climate change has caused global sea levels to rise, even as the north coast of Java continues to sink due to the over-extraction of groundwater. Ada lagi informasi terkait dengan pemanfaatan air bawah tanah yang mungkin jumlahnya sudah melebihi batas dan tidak terkontrol atau tidak terkendali, sehingga Aliran air yang berada di bawah-bawah permukaan tanah itu menjadi kering dan ini menyebabkan intrusi air laut masuk ke dalamnya. Timbul Sloko is one of the hardest hit parts of the coast, sinking about 10 cm every year, according to village head Haji Umar. Mbak kan melihat apa jalan makam Wonorejo itu. Itu dulunya air pasang sampai apa tinggi sepa apapun itu tidak uh, pernah men uh, tanah itu tenggelam tapi uh, hari uh, mulai tahun 2007 sampai sekarang tiap hari tenggelam Pak. Mr Umar says he has approached local officials for help so that the village's three cemeteries may be restored and preserved Authorities say there are plans, both short and long term, to not only restore access to the village's eroded paths, help restore the cemeteries, and educate residents on managing sanitation, but also national infrastructure plans. A new toll road is expected to function as a sea dike, with plans for an extended embankment to protect exposed villages that lie on the eastern part of the toll road. Harapan. Pemerintah di Satimbul Soko, satu, yaitu makam, kedua, 
jalan atau jembatan untuk menuju ke desa Alka Dukuh Mbogorame sama Timbul Soloko itu Mbak jadi nanti akhirnya kalau uh, apa jembatan itu dibantu oleh pemerintah akses jalan untuk uh, beli material untuk uh, orang meninggal itu bisa lewat di jembatan Kali Barijah itu Mbak While the present arrangements are bleak for the 950 families residing in Timbul Sloko village, the restoration and infrastructure plans bring hope for a better future. It's a ghost town that's bustling with life. This barrel ground, one of Vietnam's largest, in Ambang village near the central city of Hue, is like nowhere else. Curious visitors come to catch a glimpse of thousands of lavish tombs inspired by those of Vietnam's ancient kings. 85-year-old Lady Thua who lives in the village already has a grave ready for her at a family tomb. Her siblings prepared it for their parents seven years ago. This will be her final resting place, surrounded by family. Tombs in Ambang vary in sizes, and the bigger ones have room for more than 20 graves. Many families built more than one tomb if they have a large extended family. A tomb here can cost as much as 80,000 US dollars, which is extravagant, even in a country where taking care of the dead is a time-honored tradition. But Ambang's lavish dwellings for both the living and the dead are built on a past haunted by poverty and hardship. This beach was the last glimpse of the village for thousands of his sons and daughters who left on boats crossing the South China Sea to seek a new life abroad. Many died, but some made it to wealthy countries like the US where they prospered. In this village, more people made it to wealthy countries than the number of people who died. So tombs are being built and rebuilt on an ever grander scale as the flow of foreign remittances changes the experience of death and the way of life in Ambang. It could take up to two years to build artistic masterpieces like these. Some have delicate decorations put together using hundreds of thousands of pieces of porcelain and glass. These often depict mythical creatures such as the dragon, unicorn, and phoenix, which represent the power of the universe in the Vietnamese culture. Elaborate arches, pillars, and mosaic murals are the most complex part of tomb building, and it could take up to five years for a craftsman to master these skills. Tomb construction is now the bedrock of the local economy, generating hundreds of regular jobs and valuable income. Many abandoned their fishing boats to serve the dead, like these men. 
who gave up life at sea about 10 years ago for a more stable source of income. And it's also feeding those from nearby villages who drive an army of buffalo carts transporting bricks, cement and steel. Each driver can earn up to 30 US dollars per day. Ambang may be one of a kind now, but industry players say demand for luxurious barrel spaces like this is growing. Instead of traditional public cemeteries, more affluent families are opting to lay their loved ones to rest at private burial grounds, despite the high price tag that can run up to 800,000 US dollars per plot. Industry players say the real estate market for the dead in Vietnam is expected to liven up in the next five years, with more investors coming in. mà market size tức là cái tổng dung lượng thị trường của Việt Nam bây giờ đang là 5,88 tỷ đô. Nhưng mà sau cái đại dịch nó là một cái sứ giả mang cái thông điệp à, cảnh tỉnh rằng là à, mọi người nên có cái sự chuẩn bị. Và đặc biệt là đối với những người đã có điều kiện thì họ sẽ có điều kiện để chuẩn bị cái chuyện đó. This is fueling a tomb building spree as families reserve their final resting place before it runs out of space. For instance, this family tomb considered the most expensive in Ambang will lie empty for a while yet, with its 26 expected occupants still well and abroad. For now, construction sounds are part and parcel of life at the City of Ghosts. And as the tides come in, it's waiting to welcome the return of those who left to find new lives beyond the horizon decades ago.